Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for her comments on the UN Climate Change Conference in Paris. It's my first opportunity to welcome her to her job, and I do wish her well. I'm also pleased to note that the new government continues to use the nationally determined contributions set by our Conservative government, namely a 30 per cent reduction of GHG emissions over 2005 levels by the year 2030. These targets are ambitious, and much work needs to be done in order to meet them within the required time frame. Now that said, and despite the language of inclusivity and positivity infused throughout the Minister's speech, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind her of some of the very real challenges she faces. The Minister, of course, is right to point out that Canadians do experience the impacts of climate change, especially right here in Canada and especially in northern communities. And that's exactly why we're concerned that one of the very first actions of this government after the election was to drop a bombshell on Canadians. To the surprise of everyone, the Prime Minister announced without warning or consultations that he was spending more than $2 billion of additional taxpayers' money on climate change initiatives, not within Canada, but outside of Canada and foreign countries. Over $2 billion. This is money that is being spent abroad without a climate change plan, without a clear idea of who will receive the money, and without any assurance the money will be spent as intended. So what happened to the Minister's commitment to, and I quote, address this challenge through concrete actions here at home? Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to be clear that we understand Canada's responsibility to help the less fortunate countries of our world, and Canada has always done its part. However, billions of dollars to the United Nations and other agencies without consulting Canadians, without clear oversight, without effective control over how the money is spent? Where's the transparency the Prime Minister and his government were boasting about? It is our view that the government's priorities right now should be to invest in Canada first under a clear, defensible plan to address our own environmental challenges before throwing more money at unelected and often unaccountable agencies outside of Canada. Canadians deserve better. Mr. Speaker, the Minister rightly pointed to last month's speech from the throne, which stated, protecting the environment and growing our economy go hand in hand. But what she failed to repeat was the actual promise in the text, namely, and again I quote, working together, the government will continue to provide leadership as Canada works toward putting a price on carbon, end of quote. Mr. Speaker, while the Minister used today's statement to proudly boast of her government's wild spending on foreign green initiatives, I would have hoped that she would have also addressed the actual elephant in the room. And that is to say, what additional burden does she intend to place on Canadian consumers and businesses? What additional price does she intend to place on carbon? What devastation will she wreak upon hard-working Canadian families at a time when our economy is facing such significant headwinds? And how many more Canadians will lose their jobs because of her policies? Does she not realize the dire straits facing our energy sector? Those are the questions the Minister refused to answer today. So where's the leadership and where is the transparency? With a Liberal government that speaks so fervently about transparency and inclusivity, I'm perplexed that these fundamental policy questions were not even addressed today. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we must, as the Minister states, use a spirit of cooperation to fight climate change. But we can't very well cooperate if she spends billions of dollars of taxpayers' money without warning, without consultation, and when she fails to address the most serious environmental policy proposals contained in the government's speech from the throne, including the plan to price carbon. Now, Mr. Speaker, the Minister also failed to address any of the work being undertaken with our North American counterparts. I've applauded the Minister for making cooperation with our American and Mexican friends a priority as we seek to align our climate change policies with those of our North American partners. This was also the policy of the previous government, recognizing that Canada's place and competitiveness within the North American production platform can only be maintained if our climate initiatives are aligned with these partners. Mr. Speaker, could the Minister not have used this opportunity to share with us the progress being made on joint regulatory initiatives, 
Were those initiatives not discussed at COP21 in Paris when the Prime Minister wined and dined almost 400 Canadian delegates on the taxpayer's dime? And were these joint North American initiatives not discussed at Davos where the Prime Minister was hobnobbing with the international jet set? While the Prime Minister used his time in Davos to cheekily promote Canadian resourcefulness, he showed utter contempt for our resource sector by glibly disparaging and dismissing the critical role which oil, gas and mining play in supporting the Canadian way of life. Canada is, as the Minister stated, blessed with great minds and tremendous motivation. But Mr. Speaker, let's not forget that it is natural resources that pay for our education, pay for our health, pay for our high standard of living. Canada must engage in the global economy. We all, we all understand that. Ever finding new ways to assure our long-term prosperity. Yes, we must always diverse, diversify and promote our knowledge advantage, as well as the Canada brand. But we must never, ever trade our birthright, our competitive advantage in the resource sector for misguided and uninformed sound bites. So let me conclude, Mr. Speaker. I want to remind the Minister that transparency and accountability require more than just vague promises of consultations. They require a clear understanding of the impact which carbon pricing policies have on consumers, small and medium-sized businesses, and on hard-working Canadian families. They require a clear understanding that Canadians expect their government to invest first here in Canada before dishing out taxpayers' money abroad. And transparency and accountability require a clear plan for Canadians to review before that plan is implemented. Sadly, we have yet to see the plan, and sadly, we've heard nothing new in the Minister's comments today. So, Mr. Speaker, as I've said before, we are prepared to work with the government to find that balance between our economy and protecting our environment for future generations that offer still stands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.